Thank you for joining us uh, today for the MapTech EyeSight Stop and Go Mobile Solutions webinar. My name is Stuart Maurer. I'm the Director of Global Marketing here at MapTech. And today we're going to have John Dolan, the Director of Sales for the EyeSight product, share with you the benefits of the MapTech EyeSight vehicle mounted laser scanning system. During the webinar, please feel free to write in your questions uh, on the GoToMeeting panel located on the right hand side of your screen. If time permits, we'll get to those questions during the webinar. Anything that we don't get to, we will uh, take offline. So with that, I'll turn it on over to John. Hey, thanks, Stu. Laser scanning from a vehicle has become very popular today. You've seen 3D models in Google Earth. Most of those models were created from data that was acquired by mobile mappers like the one in the photo. These dynamic systems designed to scan on the fly are really designed to operate on smooth, level urban streets. Because they are dynamic, they do require relatively expensive navigational equipment and large data storage capacity on board. The solution like you're looking at here could be a million dollars. The MapTech solution is available at a fraction of that cost. And today we're going to show you the MapTech stop and go laser scanning solution designed to be used either on or off of a road. When the MapTech R&D group uh, set out to develop a solution, we looked at, at the mining industry and the rugged application and the difficult road conditions and tried to design a system around that. We've come up with a static system that simply replaces the tripod with a vehicle. That replacing a tripod with a vehicle is giving us a 50% increase in capacity, which we'll explain as we go on. It takes us about five minutes to set a tripod up and tear it down. So with the MapTech system, we're basically going to replace this with this. We're mounting the scanner onto a vehicle. We do that with an anti-vibration plate that we'll show you in greater detail further in the presentation. And now we've eliminated that tripod setup time, and we're talking about a three-minute scan time. In a minute, we're going to show you the benefits of the EyeSight Stop and Go mobile scanning system. But first, we'd like to walk you through the field workflow for collecting data. When the surveyor arrives at his first scan setup, he will go to the back of the truck to remove the equipment from the protective case. He pulls the scanner out of that case, and then he climbs into the back of the truck to actually mount the scanner into the eyesight vehicle plate. You can see that's mounted right on a rack that's on the cab of his truck. So here's a close-up of that vehicle mount plate. A couple of things we want to show you here. He just drops that in and slides it back. And then to secure it, he closes this bar with the rubber bumper on it. And then there's a pin that actually locks it into place. So once he's done those two things, the scanner is mounted directly to the truck. Now these anti-vibration spherical bearings, there's four of them. That's really the key to the system. That's allowing us to to run up and down haul roads at, at, at relatively high rates of speed and leave the vehicle in place for the entire day without damaging the scanner. At this time, he'd also be mounting GPS receivers onto the scanner and then a second one as a reference point. He's got a couple of pairs of cables he's got to plug in for data transmission. And also the power is coming right off the vehicle, so there's no battery involved, so we're actually powering the scanner from the vehicle. He's completed all of his work on the outside of the vehicle, so now he's going to hop into the cab, and he's got a few things he needs to do. The first thing he's doing here is collecting the coordinates for a pair of GPS points, one on the scanner and then a second GPS receiver on the back of the truck that's working as a reference point. After the GPS data is collected, you go to his tablet PC and set the parameters for the scan that he's about to take. These could be things like the resolution of the data, the exposure setting for the camera, the field of view can be adjusted as well here. When that is complete, he starts to scan. A scan goes off. It takes about three minutes to do a full 360 degree scan from the truck here. And he has finished his first scan, so he's complete. 
you'll move up to a second location and he'll repeat the full in cab process of collecting the two GPS points, setting the parameters. Now, as we mentioned earlier, these scans take as little as three minutes. So once he started the scan, now he's sitting in the truck. He can actually go back and look at the last scan, the first scan he did, and he look at it on the tablet piece C here and see if he got the full coverage that he intended. So it gives him the ability to look at the data before he leaves the job site and determine if he got coverage of the entire area. That's how easy it is to collect the data in the field. And I'd like to talk to you about the, some of the benefits of the EyeSight stop and go mobile system. And the first one is a in, potential increase in capacity. Look at the guy in this picture here. And I think he's probably at maximum capacity there. So what we're talking about with the EyeSight system is, is being able to increase your capacity by over 50%. Once again, about five minutes in time to set a tripod up and tear it down. We take that out of the equation completely, just pull up and scan in three minutes. So that's where we're getting our 50% increase in capacity. Increase in safety. I think every company in, in business these days is, is really concerned with, with safety. And the EyeSight system can help you with safety in, in three different ways. The, the first one is really just the function that it's a remote sensing device. If you can imagine being a surveyor and having to survey the, the bottom of this uh, this pit around this equipment, be walking around with a GPS receiver, it's relatively dangerous. With an EyeSight system, we could be set up where this picture was taken from. It's a remote sensing device, so we don't need to be right there. The second way that we increase safety is by keeping this guy in the cab and getting greater visibility. You can see a man in a truck much better than you can see a man walking around. And the third benefit is really around production and productivity. Typically, if a surveyor had to survey this area that's in this picture, he would really have one of two choices. Either he would stop and wait until the operators here took their coffee break, or alternately, he might radio them and say, hey, can you guys go ahead and take a break for a little while so I can get in there and safely walk around the equipment? Either one of those are going to be a loss of production because we're going to be effectively either shot, shutting the operation down or having an employee that's not working because he's waiting for them to take their break. Working in any weather conditions is another benefit of being able to laser scan from the cab of a vehicle. Rain, snow, heat, cold, they're all factors in working outside in a survey situation and they generally are not increasing productivity. So if we can keep that, that operator in the truck, it's going to facilitate working in those undesirable elements. And the other thing is it's going to keep that employee safe from very harsh conditions like extreme cold and, and hypothermia, that sort of thing. Now we'd like to show you what the, what the process is for, for putting the data together in our software. So we've got Mike Foster our EyeSight Senior Technical Consultant at the controls here. And what you're looking at is our EyeSight Studio point cloud processing software. And we've got three scans from a road job here. We've got these scans all colored independently, red, green, white. And we've colored those just so we can differentiate between the three different scans. So what we're seeing here is the scans have all been imported, and when they're imported, they don't really know where they are yet. So they all have a zero, zero origin. So we've got three scans that are basically all laying on top of each other, and they're at a zero, zero origin. So what we're going to want to do is register these to the local coordinate system. And we've mentioned a couple of times that we, we're taking a couple of GPS shots at each setup. One, the actual... Um, scanner and the second one a reference point somewhere on the on the vehicle. So we've got two points here. The C2 would be the, the shot we took on top of the scanner. That's going to put the origin of the data exactly right. And the B2 point then is that reference point that's going to roughly align us for north. So we'll show you that process. We've got we've got the points out there. Mike's going to go ahead and drag the scans right on top and you're not going to see those because the points are in the local coordinate system and the scans are out at zero, 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 way off of our bounding box. 
So to bring those scans into the local coordinate system, we'll just use our registration tool here. And when Mike applies that, you'll see these scans jump right on top of those three setup points. So that's a start. But we've got some rotational issues. Things are not lined up. And the reason they're not lined up is the eyesight system, it has a backsighting scope to be used when you're working off a tripod. When we work off of a truck, we don't backsight. And then the machine assumes it's looking straight out the back of the truck. And we've got this second GPS receiver as a reference point somewhere else on the truck. So we need to actually measure that angle between that GPS receiver and the back of the truck. And to do that, Mike's gone into our panoramic view mode. This is taking the 70 megapixel digital photo and draping it over the points. And so what he wants to do is actually find the point that is kind of the center of that GPS receiver, and that'll give us that measurement to get the angle. You're going to do this one time. You're going to set your truck up, and that receiver's always going to be there. So you're going to measure this one time. So he drags that scan into the calibration panel, and then when he clicks on the center of that GPS receiver, you'll see that the coordinates for that point are populated. But then more importantly, it is also measured and calculated a back bearing alignment angle, and that's we need to apply to these scans to get them to align. So Mike will apply this to this first scan, and you'll see that data rotated on us. Now if we close this panoramic view and look at all the data, Mike will apply it to the two other scans, and you'll see these scans will quickly align themselves with one another. And now we have something that looks a little bit more like a road in a commercial area. It looks pretty good, but we're not quite done yet because we have some discontinuity in the three scans as evident by this particular building wall. I can see distinctly three lines of green, red, and white when there should be one line. The reason for this is we just have a reference point. We haven't done a hard back site. So what we want to do now is make that alignment, and we will do that by having the software look at all the overlapping data between scans. To start out, we're going to apply a filter to this data to basically just cut the data out that we're wanting to look at along the road and get rid of some of the data that's outside that the computer will really struggle finding matching point pairs because there aren't any. So Mike's going to basically throw away all the data outside 800 feet and inside 100 feet here. And so it just crops it down to this smaller area. And once it's been cropped down and we're just looking at these overlapping data sets, we can now use another registration tool that we have called our global registration tool. You might well just go ahead and drag the scans into that window and then apply this operation to those scans. Now keep your eyes on that green, white, and red line there on that building wall because when this finishes up, it'll snap right into place and now we have a registered point cloud. Mike can bring all the data back that we filtered out and clipped out by just doing a show all filter. And then finally, he'll show you how we can color the data by RGB values from the digital photo. We can also drape the digital photo, but this is basically the way raw data will come into our, our scanner. It'll come in colored with those RGB values. So you can see as we zoom in, it's starting to look like a street. You see power lines. You can see little pieces of cars going through that sort of thing. Data is all registered into one point cloud, and now the operator is ready to go ahead and start extracting some features from the data. So that's pretty much the end-to-end -end processing part of processing data off of an eyesight vehicle mode system. That's, uh, that's most of what we have for a webinar. I just want to conclude by reviewing these benefits. Again, you can increase your capacity by over 50% using a MapTech EyeSight laser scanning system that's vehicle mounted. You can improve safety for workers in high traffic areas. It will also allow you to work in all weather conditions. MapTech offers both products and services to assist you with your scanning needs. We do rentals as well as consulting work as well as actually sell the systems. If you'd like to learn more, you can visit maptech.com or if you want to see the eyesight truck that you see in this photo, 
you can stop by our booth at Mine Expo. It's number 6062, and that's September 24th to 26th in Las Vegas. So at this point, I'll turn this back over to Stu. Thanks, John. Okay, so we're gonna we got a couple questions that came in. Uh, I'm just gonna fire them at you. Uh, the first question is that how much rain is acceptable to keep scanning? How much rain? So um, our system is completely sealed and can operate in a deluge. I've done that a couple of times. The biggest thing that you have with rain or snow with regard to scanning, knowing that our system is sealed and can operate out there, is the fact that you're going to lose some resolution because you will pick up raindrops and snowflakes. The easy workaround for that is simply to increase the resolution. We have five resolution settings, so if I was scanning a particular job at a two on a clear day, I might go up to a four on a rainy day to get the same amount of points on the subject. Okay. Uh, what kind of accuracy does the scanner get? The EyeSight 8800 laser scanning system has a range accuracy of 10 millimeters on the points, um, and that's that's the general inside of 300 meters. Really, the accuracy for laser scanning relative to possibly like a GPS survey comes from the resolution of the data. We tend to get 100 to 1,000 times the number of points that we typically would by walking. So I think this next question is, is almost uh, related to that. So how many scans can you acquire with the vehicle mounted system in one day? Well, me personally being the sales guy, probably 20 or 30, but our, our professionals, the consulting group we have here, I think the current record runs just over 70 scans in a single day. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Um, what kind of vehicle and what kind of mounting system do I need for the scanner? Uh, do I need a truck? That's a great question. We're really designed to mount on anything. Um, we, we've run the scanner. We've got our eyesight truck that you've seen in this presentation. We've shown up at LAX out in Los Angeles with the scanner and a vehicle plate and rented a truck and popped it on there. We've got a, a client down in Texas that actually mounts the scanner to a John Deere tractor and runs it down into a mine pit. I've had them on 4x4 four four ATVs before, so if we can bolt our plate onto something, we can go with it. We just need to stop when we, we get there. Okay, it looks like we've got one more question. Uh, you mentioned that you can set the scanner up and then travel uh, haul road speeds on relatively rough roads. Can you discuss this a little bit further? Yeah, I, I, and, and I, I hesitated in the presentation there because I can never remember if it's 40 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour, but I'm pretty sure it's 40 kilometers an hour is really the design speed for that vehicle mount plate. So without getting way technical on you, we can look at the kind of the moment of force that we create that we get of mounting this thing on top of a typical vehicle and running at 40 miles an hour on a haul road. So yeah, that 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 40 kilometers an hour is really kind of a, a good guideline. If, if you're running around a mine in particular and you're staying within the speed limits on the mine site, you're going to be fine. All right, that looks like the end of our question, so I think we will uh, wrap it up from there. So thanks everybody for attending. Uh, we will be making this video available. You should, all attendees should actually get a uh, email after this webinar is over with a recording of it. We'll also have it posted on the website. Uh, we have some other videos of the truck in action that you can find on our YouTube page. That's maptech.com slash maptechvideo, all one word. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always get in touch with us via the website. So thank you again, and uh, we will hopefully see you all at the next iSight webinar uh, coming up in a few weeks. Thanks.